right, how's everyone going? It's Jay and Trent from, what's the word? Hey guys, what's up? Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the top 10 for ZTO TV. Top 10. And we'll go from there, right? Not, that's that's it, but with Thank you all for joining us, and then let's get, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Yeah. So at uh, number 10, which is the, the last roundup horror show, Holiday Horror Favorites. I didn't even know that there was even like a, I don't know, a holiday horror. I mean, I, I can't think of any. Do you, can, can you, can you, Jay? Um, no, but I, I actually am a fan of this, this show. I, Cause I'm I actually, I'm a bit of a horror aficionado. Oh, and I don't know. Frank, if you're, if you're listening, I know you are. I would like to join in on one of those, by the way. Oh shit. <laughs> But, but yeah. But anyways, on this uh, number 10, in the, the collection of holiday-themed horror reviews, the last round of horror show panel celebrates Christmas as only they can by decking the halls with blood and guts. Mm. Yeah, this is a compilation of... Uh, we've done several Christmas specials because there's a, there's a lot more than you'd think. Um, you know, there's Black Christmas, there's uh, Christmas Evil... Uh, what else do we there's a real buck wild one called Rec, rare exports where uh, I can't I can't even explain it to you just watch it and be prepared for a lot of really old man penises uh, <laughs> unexpe- I, I was I didn't know it was happening so you know I just want to prepare people if they watch it um, it's a good movie but fucking weird i might just pull a rating out of my ass on this one because i don't know i've been i've been been interested you made that little comment who's or your question whose pick was rare exports yeah i it 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 got me yeah like i was didn't see that coming did you (laughs) that is true rare exports come on what are we doing now hit it up in the depths of the corvatunturi mountains finland 486 meters deep yes. lies the closest finish the closest ever guarded secret finish <laughs> what <laughs> what finish finish oh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> the time has come to dig it up the Christmas everyone will believe in Santa Claus oh okay so they find something in a I'm mountain I'm thinking that this uh... they find something in a mountain <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that this this uh, synopsis here was say it into the mic. Was translated. It okay. was translated. Let's let's just let's just start that Ooh. all over again, Frank. Shit. Give that one a go again. Leave that one in. <laughs> Leave it. I'm Leave leaving it. it in. You find yeah. out that in a mountain in Finland that Santa's buried underneath. They've discovered yeah. a Santa. guy has hired a digging crew to come in and dig it up. The real Santa Claus, real not that Santa. Coca-Cola bullshit. Not that fucking. That lied to us. Two bit asshole with the rosy cheeks. But uh one real kid, Santa that ripped little kids to pieces if they were bad. One kid figures out what's going what's going on. And Petri. What's his name? Petri. I'll tell you what, man, Peter. that kid goes running around out in that snow without no pants on. Like it ain't shit. Yeah. He don't give two fucks. Fucking <laughs> wolf bits everywhere. Tidy whities Them fucking them people know how to handle cold. Wolf pits all over the place. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie overall. Uh, I don't think that the penises at the end were necessary. Yeah, jump, jump right to the penis. Huh? Damn, you can't fucking book a what? bunch of naked old men in the movie. Fucking a fucking a fucking a fucking a. You can't expect me. I can at least tell what they were. They were elves. Look, all right, all right. So, so no, no, so 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 so. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit. So they discover the real Santa, they dig him out, they learn that he's actually one of Santa's helpers, he's not actually the Santa Claus. Yeah, because the people dug, the, the digging team digs Santa out and disappears. In the movie, they make you think that this guy that looks like an old withered Santa Claus what we think of Santa Claus is the Santa Claus. Right. And they show you a scene where all these people are just getting attacked, but you don't see who's doing the attacking. You find out that they actually found Santa, and Santa is like a two-story tall. You don't see him in the movie. They're very disappointing. But you got a two-story uh, tall block of ice with giant horns sticking out. They lead you to believe that it probably looks like the idea of Krampus. I'm guessing. Only about two stories tall. And 
the kids have been disappearing, Petrie finds out. All the kids. All the kids, all their their heating Yep. The, their, the ovens. Anything the, that warms the blow dryers. The kids. And uh, you find out that this old guy that looks like Santa is actually one of our el- one of his elves. It's one of Santa's helpers. And so all the naked one of many. Yeah. All the the naked old men, Santa's helpers. So there are a bunch of naked old men who are Santa's helpers. But yes, who all look like what we think Santa looks like. And a lot trying, of old man penis. There's like they're trying 12, to thaw like 12, him. Twelve, 12 total, I think. I'm, I would guess no, more, there's than, more that. than that. I there's, mean, at one point they're all running. Yeah, you just there's, see, there's I a mean, herd. But, but, I mean, they hurt. You don't really notice. <laughs> they hurt. I guess you're watching it. I, I, you were watching it on a big ass TV pro- with the Blu-ray, right? Okay. And zooming in on the penis. <laughs> no, yeah, I paused if, it. I just, if I, I, I couldn't I deal with the If running. I couldn't see it, I blew it <laughs> no, up. Whenever, some of them were, you know, well endowed. Some <laughs> of them had to zoom in a little bit. Whenever, whenever they're flying that helicopter with the kids over everything, and those uh, that horde of old men, that's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, but when they were washing them at the end to, to sell them, you can, first of all, you cannot sell a man. You can't do it. Dude. It's a Christmas tale. <laughs> this, this is a tale. Yeah. So I'm assuming that they they were selling reindeer, right? That was their first. Or, yeah. Okay. That's because the the herd of reindeer have all died. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and that's Petrie. Petrie's father yes. and the other people. They herd reindeer and probably uh, Petrie's father's a butcher. I'm guessing they sell the meat, they sell the pelts, they keep some of the meat. It's just how they make their money. Um, all the reindeer end up slaughtered, and so they're kind of angry with they're this. They're blaming the. They're blaming the company, telling them they owe them eighty three thousand dollars, and that's when they go up in there to say, "You owe us," and find out everyone's gone. Already dead. I gotta say, the ri- original concept. Original. Man. And I really enjoyed the relationship between the father and son. Surprised me at every turn. And uh, I think everybody should see this if you, at, at least once, you know? Yeah, I, it it caught me at every turn. I didn't see anything <laughs> coming. Even to the end. At the end, they stop him from thawing out Santa. They blow him up and cut the horns off, I'm guessing, to sell. They're only, like Petrie's father and the other guys, their only motivation is just to get the money back that they lost on the reindeer being slaughtered. Um, and they herd all these Santa's elves that look like Santa into their reindeer fence and I'm th- and then blow Santa up. And I'm thinking, okay, the and once Santa blows up, the elves are no longer trying to get the kids anymore or do anything. So I'm thinking, okay, this is where you end. But then, let's, let's not leave out the whole ending. Then, another surprise, they spend the next year training all of the Santa's helpers to be Santa's. To sell them. And then create them it's a up tale. and sell them all <laughs> like over the world. I like how that's how he's validating. It's a tale, man. It's a Christmas tale. You can do anything you want. I liked it a lot. Yeah, everybody should see it. Uh, seven out of ten for me. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I found it hard. I found it hard to rate. Um, <laughs> just it's. I think I want to watch it again before I give it. This a, is my third time. Yeah, I want to watch it again before I give it a really solid rating. Um, but I'm just gonna say eight. I I really enjoyed it. I thought everybody does a great job in it. Um, the the funny stuff is funny. The crazy stuff is crazy. I was surprised and, and I think all I, the way through. I imagine it's even funnier if you not having to read the subtitles and like uh, you can pick up one. You know, I forgot it was even subtitled. Yeah, like a uh, yeah. I guess we should mention it. that it yeah. is part is, sub- is subtitled. There's uh, some but English like in it. there's the little stuff you that we can't hear in their language like. Yeah. Their like yeah. sarcasm and stuff like that. I, I, my thing is, I was left wanting more. Like, yeah. I was left wanting a little more for the setup. What they set up was really good. Um, Santa getting loose, maybe getting. I, I think this one wanted to been see the Santa. A really dark, bad. like where a dark <laughs> song went, went, uh, angel in full regalia, and we're yeah. like, oh, that's not right. I think that's the move you make in this movie. I think this movie, you go for that full. Just over Might have the top. It up, though, Jared. Yeah. It's a Christmas tale. It's <laughs> it's feel good. But and that's what I said. I want to watch it again a couple more times. Yeah, um, that's just how I was. That's yeah, what I I'll was watch left it again. with. I, I gave was it left a, wanting a little more than it did. I wrote down seven, but I've now convinced myself it's an eight. <laughs> yeah, the actors are great. Uh, like they, they are they. That's the thing. I couldn't tell if they were or not. I think they are. Yeah. That's what I said. I think they're even better than what we can actually I mean, even tell. Yeah. They play. 
they a lot of the comedy just comes from how straightforward and well, we just got to deal with this shit that they play everything. The well, timing I mean, and how cool they are about everything. Yeah, I they're mean, getting ready to cut that old dude open. They put him on the butcher block. Yeah. And get, this is ah, we got. This is how we got to do. I mean, and they're just really kind of straight. They're like Meh, straightforward. Well, imagine, about imagine stuff, though, man. you've got you know you you got a son. Imagine if that happened to you and your son. Your son, your son's like, Dad, don't worry about it. I got this shit. I'm gonna hold on to this fucking thing full of kids and we're gonna fly over the fucking <laughs> winter wonderland on a helicopter i mean at that point yeah well sure son all See the stuff later. that's going down <laughs> well, i'm gonna blow up this santa claus <laughs> here's a fun fact did you all know that sharks have two penises really i didn't even know that one for grabby grabby and one for pokey pokey did you know that an echidna has a three-headed penis Ooh, one penis with three heads. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Where's Ray? There's Ray. There is. Drink. <laughs> Ooh, that was that was smashing. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys should have home. said that in uh, the Thornberry. Accent. Oh, that is smashing. smashing. <laughs> well, you know, with with my love of wine. I know. Look I at mean, him. He's got I his am... glass and everything. I am a my own meme, just just so you know. Show the shirt. Show the shirt. Oh, mess up your jealous. face there. Okay, there you go. Now you can see your face. Be jealous. <laughs> Wait, he, he enlarged you. Oh, oh, here we yeah, go. Yeah, show again. the shirt. So get you yours go. today at ZTO TV. ZTO TV, nineteen eighty two on T Public. <laughs> they're nice. They're soft. There'll be photos. I'm going to be sending the ZTO TV way, so you'll be bling blinging. I swear, man, that that gives me like Alan Parsons vibes, and I'm loving it. <laughs> it's it's gotcha. actually sky. It, it's relatively nice and soft. It's actually a really good price. You guys got to pick it up. Great quality. Represent myself, please. This should be the cover <laughs> of your jazz bass uh, solo album. Right? Oh, that'd be funny. Yes. <laughs> you got it. Oh, you got to take a picture. Um, that same get up, but you're holding With a the t-shirt. Saxophone. Well, what I plan on doing, actually, once I get this actually officially cleaned, I'm actually going to do the same pose as I did before with the shirt on in the same pose. Just kind of like do some like really weird inception shit. That would be I sweet. Know. I don't know. That's 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 the plan for me, at least. I don't know. But anyways, Jay, take it to number nine. Looks like number nine is Schlockfest episode 29, Santa Jaws. Um, and I was I was on this one, too. I'm on everything, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, have you guys seen Santa Jaws? I have not. It sounds uh, familiar. It's, it's something else, man. Uh, it's not as bad as you think, but it's not as good as you want it anything to be when you're watching it. So... I don't know. Jean it's on Hulu. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's on a lot of places. Uh, it's fairly easy to find. Uh, it, it's just your, your typical sci-fi channel <clears throat> style uh, Santa. Oh, well, Christmas shark movie? I don't know. It, I wouldn't recommend it necessarily, but... You know. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading a little bit about it. So trying to survive the family Christmas, Cody makes a wish to be alone which ends up backfiring when a shark manifests and kills his entire family. Yeah. The thing about it is like, okay, they, I, I think my theory is it was written by a five-year-old because <laughs> the whole idea behind it is that this kid, his grandpa gives him a pen that can um, make anything he draws come to life. And I think that if adult people with a, with you know any intelligence was we <laughs> had the idea first of all of like oh it's a pen that can make anything come to life they would have thought of a few more cooler ideas before they landed on a christmas shark you know so i don't know everybody likes the, different stuff though so whatever so so you said it's a pen so yeah. it's, it's not like a because i'm seeing a photo of like a candy cane looking thing oh no no it looks like um uh, it looks like uh, one of those the pens you would dip in ink, but it looks like it was carved oh. by an elf. There is a scene where like um, a fountain pen. There's a scene where somebody stabs the shark with a 
peppermint stick thing and he draws a <laughs> that's, that's what i'm looking at right now uh, he draws a uh, he, he draws a peppermint stick that stabs it into the face but then it becomes like a horn uh and then it he like takes all its teeth out i don't want to ruin it but you know it's just like the whole concept of if you've come up with an idea for oh my movie's going to be about a kid that has a magic pen maybe he would draw some other cool shit or maybe his grandpa would let him know hey if you draw something with this <laughs> it's going to come alive i don't know there's a lot of flaws in it but uh, i guess you shouldn't shouldn't really look into it that I, deep i don't know i'm kind of intrigued it kind of looks like one of those movies that you just kind of just stumble upon late at night yeah and then you're just kind of you don't want to turn it off you kind of just want to see where it goes yeah, it's like it almost seems like the Sci Fi Channel commissioned the Family Channel to make a <laughs> shark Christmas movie for him because that's kind of the vibe it has the whole way. But like, run it. Yeah. <laughs> Green light it. No, I, I would, I would, I would watch it. But if you you said that, don't really look too too much into it. I mean, then again, it's a Santa Jaws movie. Yeah, I mean, the whole concept of the Schlockfest show is Jean Paul finds the worst movies he can find and makes Ray watch them. And <laughs> that's the whole dynamic of it. So that's you awesome. Know. Check. Yeah. yeah, definitely check that out. So then he gets in trouble and, and his mom's like, you can't go to the big comic book day parade. The, no, it's the it's Christmas called. Eve comic book party. Comic book party. Which <laughs> sounds like probably the saddest event you could ever attend. <laughs> and the smells. Oh, the smells. Eggnog and comic book fans close hey. together. Hey. Hey man. Hey. You've been you guys have been to conventions. I haven't. What's it smell like? Is yeah. it good? You get it in would you <laughs> light a candle? Would you light a candle with that scent? That's what I'm saying. Jean, Jean Paul and I could both verify that 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 stereotype is accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. We that stood in line true. for four hours once for uh, you know Clyde Barker, and the smells were uh, were something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shower every day. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for that update. You guys are the outliers, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I sh I shower every day too, and I and I I I was like when I was there, I'm like, why did I do this? I should have just not showered and had vinegar balls like the rest of these guys. Uh, next up, we got number eight, a very special episode, Matthew McConaughey. So uh, let's see here. Uh, Matthew McConaughey's filmography has taken a task as Schlockfest's own Jean-Paul Mantilla. Mant Mantilla or Mantilla? Man Mantilla, yep. Mantilla. And Randy Ray McGuff Wotan discuss the man's entire career in film, the good, the bad, the unforgettable yeah the, this this whole thing started because ray was a huge uh who who is it john um cusack fan he's like he's never done anything bad and john paul's like well i don't know about that so they started going through his movies and he basically proved that, the, that there's only like 25 or so titles that ray really liked and then it starts dipping like in that early or mid nineties or so he starts really dipping on quality. And then uh, they just decided to start doing a side gig, a side show um, all about going through these IMDb credits. But some of them, some, some of these dudes have like a ton of credits. So uh, they're gonna have to be choosy when they pick their actors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A movie I love, and most people have never seen this movie. Uh, Tiptoes with uh, Gary Oldman, where you he said, plays. You said Dick Toes? Uh, no, uh, Tippy Toes, oh, where, okay. where, where, where he plays Gary Oldman's twin brother. And uh, Gary Oldman is a little person. I've never heard of this movie in my uh, life. Oh, please roll this trailer and we'll just all listen in on it. I mean, you're going to be surprised all the people this has. <laughs> How long is this show going to be, by the way? <laughs> we should, we, we'll move along really quick. <laughs> You're right. I've got to get going. Right this second. Hey, baby. Hey, sweetie. I love you. There's one small problem. Hi. I'm Ralph. I'm his brother. We're twins. Are your parents? Um... Yeah. It can tear them apart. I think you could have let me know that everyone in your family's a midget. They're not midgets, Carol. The dwarves. Whatever. Or bring them together. Are you fucking hey, kidding me? <laughs> 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 
This is Steven's father, Bruno, and his mom, Kathleen. And over behind the bar is Steven's brother, Rolf. Hi. You could have prepared us for this, don't you think? If you embarrass me, I'll never speak to you again, so just get it together. Hey there, by the drink. When the going gets rough, it's only the size of your heart that counts. Can it really be that big of a trailer's so great. <laughs> you knocked up this great girl and you didn't tell her that her baby's probably gonna be little. I'm not like you. We are so cute and cuddly. Don't discriminate yeah. us. Peter Dinklage. Yeah. And Bridget I'm the Midget. Wild. I never expected this. There's sure a lot of midgets around here. You better back off, Goldie Hawk. My man can do what he wants to do. <laughs> ready for an adult relationship. What is this man doing in your bedroom? A walk down the aisle. Ah, uh, Steven's a, he's a very lucky guy. I just hope he's smart enough not to screw it up. Is just a beginning. There'll be rough patches, there's no doubt about it. Canal Plus and Langley Productions proudly present command performances from Kate Beckinsale. Command wow. performances, you hear this? Patricia Arkin, yeah. <laughs> and in the role of a lifetime, Gary Oldman. <laughs> <laughs> Tiptoes. I, I, am, I am fucking, my brain exploded. In a role of a lifetime. In a role of a lifetime. A movie I've never heard of. How did that get made? Well, that's like the most offensive thing I've seen in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not offensive, but it's just hilarious the fact that Gary Holman plays Matthew McConaughey's twin brother, who happens to be a dwarf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that he's doing his southern accent too, yeah. and he had the mustache. We'll drink to that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um we'll move on to the next one here for number seven. If you want to take that, Trent. Yeah, it looks like it's the horror of Moss Grove. Apparently, this very special release is a uh, comp. <laughs> this might be easier for me to explain it. Um, we do two different versions of the horror show. One of them is just straight reviews. We do four reviews, and that's it. The other one is called Last Roundup Horror Club. And that was one we were trying to bring people in, like from our, we have a group, and we we're trying to bring more people in. And it ended up developing into every time we would do that, we would do one review. We would do um, a game I came up with, an RPG that I based around the Dungeons and Dragons kind of rules, but I wrote the whole story myself and came up with everything that happens in nice. it. And uh, we finished a campaign in three episodes because it was just a short little uh, danger room kind of scenario that I put together. And I put those together so you could listen to the whole thing all at once instead of having to you know serialize it or whatever um but yeah we started a new one on our uh, on the next episode that comes out that's more of a sci-fi bend um but it's just fun it's so much fun to come up with these scenarios and throw my friends into it as you guys are uh oh, discussing your next move uh just so happens that a bag-headed mutant bursts through the <laughs> <laughs> through the front you window. Don't say. Yeah, yeah. bag-headed mutant just so happened to, <laughs> to roll right on that number that he needed to hit, and uh, he busts through the fucking window. So, oh random God. encounter happens. <laughs> uh, what do you say? Dave's turn. Dave? All right. Well, you have an empty beer bottle in your hand. And what else did you have? I can't remember. Uh, duct tape? Let's <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> can I can I smash the beer bottle over the Foot Locker so I have like a sure. weapon? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Let me see how you do it. So I'm gonna that. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay. Well, it doesn't break. So. Ah. Well, I don't know what to tell you there. <laughs> you want to try? Oh, yeah, it? I don't know what to do. Go ahead and give it another shot. I'll give you another shot here. All right. Um. So so it broke. It broke that time. You hit it twice. <laughs> 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 Um, you know, you would try it again, I think. You yeah. Would, yeah. You wouldn't Give it a couple of taps. Okay, I, I take the, uh, I, I try to attack the, the bad-headed goblin. Alright. Oh, you really hit him good. Right yeah. in the eye, right oh, in the nice. eyeball. Yeah, fuck yeah. that guy. Yeah, <laughs> he, uh, he gets hit for 30 hit points. Yep. But he's not dead. He's not dead. Okay. Jason? I take my sledgehammer and I bash his skull in. <laughs> That's tempting. Let's see how it works out. 
Ooh. I love how many blunt weapons we have. It's like, well, we check. You didn't hit him. You missed. Oh. <laughs> 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 but, you know, the good thing is he didn't hit you either. He comes at you and he falls on the floor. Oh, shit. Okay. John? What, what are my weapons? You have, um, you have a you have flashlight, a, a hatchet, a Bic lighter, and a warm beer. I, I hatchet him in the head. And you hit him. Let's see how much. Oh, not not a lot. Not a lot. Oh, Jason, give me the sledge. <laughs> uh, <laughs> toss the sledge to somebody so they can just two hit mel- to do a melon on Two like, points? He got two hit, points, he huh? hit him by two. He grazed, grazed, grazed him. Jeez. So this fucking thing's still alive? Is that? Yeah, it's got quite yeah. a few hit points left. He's a big guy. He, he broke a nail, though. He, he doesn't have a weapon, though. And he seems fairly stupid. He, can, he can't even get off the floor. <laughs> okay. I think he messed himself up. He, like, confused himself when he busted through the window. So, But what do you say, Ray? Um, I tie him up with the rope. Oh. There you go. All right. Let's see how this works out for you. Now we can kill him. Okay. Uh, he's a little too strong. Uh, Fuck that. And now you're wrestling with him on the ground. <laughs> so you guys might want to consider teaming up against this guy in some way. They're not wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't wrestling. Stop fucking me, bad guy. <laughs> I'll take it from here. We'll go ahead and move on to number six, Deconstructing Bill Murray. Episode nine, Scrooged. It's a 1988 film. Ray and Frank discuss Bill Murray's holiday classic from 1988, Scrooged, on this episode of Deconstructing Bill Murray. Look for Ghostbusters 2 coming up next on hashtag Deconstructing Bill. Yeah, that was a fun I time. actually like this movie a lot. It's actually a personal favorite of mine. I oh, yeah. never, the holidays. You've never, never seen it? it? You've never oh seen it? Oh, man. I know it's past Christmas, but you might want to just... Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bobcat yep. Goldthwait, right? He's in yep. that too, right? Yeah, the uh, Bobcat Goldthwait's in it, and uh, yeah. all the Mil- all the Murray brothers are in it. Joel's in it. Um, uh, John, the one that's never in anything, uh, plays his actual brother. And um, mm-hmm. uh, what's the older What's the older one? Uh, uh, damn it, uh, Brian Doyle. Um, he plays the father in the flashbacks. But yeah, it's it's really good, and it landed just naturally. We when we started this, we've just been going through the filmography like in order, and Ghostbusters landed in October, and then this landed in December, um, just by luck, I guess. Um, Got to say, he doesn't have a lot of bad movies so far. I mean, some of the ones that I thought I loved a lot, I uh, upon second glance, uh, aren't as good. They don't stand up like Meatballs. Even though I love meatballs, uh, have you guys seen that? I've never heard of it. Oh I've, man, uh, I think I've, I've seen that. <laughs> it's like one of his first movies. It was either before or right after Stripes, um, and it's just. I've a summer. never seen that either. Damn, Trent. <laughs> Trent, I'm just, I'm that, just that, Stripes. Just, <laughs> no, oh, me, meatballs. While he sips his wine. Meatballs. You don't. You don't need to see Meatballs. It's a fun movie for what it is. But Stripes has John Candy in it. Uh, yeah. Who else is in it? God, it's. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest. It. it after they get through bo- uh, boot camp, it kind of drops off for me. But other than that, it's. It's a really. It's a classic. You might want to <laughs> peruse some of his uh, movies there. A little bit of trivia for this movie. Uh, filming began in December 1987, and. Um, with Christmas coming up, this ran, they filmed this until the spring. Christmas came up and Richard Donner asked the production uh, if they could have Christmas day off. And Paramount Pictures executives did not want them to do that. They insisted on filming even on Christmas day. So what Richard Donner did was he fired the whole cast and then rehired them on the December 26th. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that, that, that shows a lot of character there. And it's weird that it happened. It's ironic that it happened on this movie. Well, Trent, we're going to have to watch Scrooge because I actually have that. We we might need to do What's the Word with, with Scrooge. <laughs> yeah. 
Screws. But speaking of which, number five. Number oh, five. Yeah. What's the word with, you know, us? <laughs> <laughs> Episode 10, the Canadian experience. I don't know, Jay. I mean, I I was actually really kind of proud of this episode really we we, uh, we did yeah we, we took it a little differently we we went international we got some literally. guests mm -hmm. uh to join us from canada um and kind of get their take on well, well some of some of the aspects of their culture and like some of the questions that we might have for them um from the outside from the perspective, looking in like an outside yeah. looking in and then from their like their perspective on our current events and what's happening here and their take on it. And we, we, we talk about the, the pandemic and how th that's like the elephant in the room, the election. I mean, it's hard to not talk about all these things. Some people would, I guess, think, I, I don't know. What would you say? Difficult to talk about, but it's, it's kind of, I, I mean, not, I it's kind of hard not to talk about it. It's just, just like kind of how how we how we roll things it's what's the word yeah. it's what people are talking about and yeah it's always I mean, good to get that uh, different type of experience from outside but we also have a little fun with it and um be prepared for some maple syrup there's a lot of maple syrup a lot uh, of maple syrup references in that episode and bacon um and bacon uh, I, yeah, had a problem. Yeah, I, I had a bit of a problem with their whole view on Canadian bacon. Being you know, better. it's funny. I literally yeah. bought Canadian bacon a few weeks after our filming. Uh -huh. And do that shit like pops like a mother. <laughs> it's like, like him, man. I'm like, it's what not it's not bacon. I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say that on the on the episode. I, I feel yeah. like they had to but say it's not bacon. bacon. I feel like they had to say it because like, yeah. like there were people listening. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian, the Canadian Gestapo or something or, like that. Like the Secret Service is like, you guys, you guys. Hopefully John and uh, Ryan aren't listening to this. They can't, I, they can't, I have had both. And you know, I'm not, I'm not like a, a patriot over here. I'm, I'm honestly saying American bacon is better. Than, it, it's ham, man. It's like comparing it's ham. ham. It, I'll, it, it's a slice of ham, like a small I'll, ham. Uh, I'll reference this. I'll reference this. On uh, an episode of Trailer Park Boys, uh, Randy was uh, cooking some breakfast. They didn't make so Canadian bacon. They actually made American bacon. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's all I have to say about that. But but we love you guys if you're listening. Yes. And maple syrup is. I actually did try maple syrup again. It's good stuff, since, man. And it's, it's good. good. It's it's, good. it's rich. I mean, it's it's a and little it's bit expensive. expensive. <laughs> It's a little pricey, but very decadent. But, but being a diabetic, I kind of stay away. I'm not see with my breakfast eating. I'm not. I'm not a a sweet breakfast eater. I'm more of a savory guy. I'm, I'm a see bacon, that makes sense though. Meat. I mean, with the sugar and whatnot. True, and but... I'll drink to that. <laughs> Poutine or maple syrup? Poutine. Poutine. Canadian bacon or American bacon? Canadian bacon. Canadian. Oh, oh. Biscuit or cookie? Cookie. Okay. No, I'm gonna go biscuit. Trailer Park Boys or Letter Kenny? Oh man, that's <laughs> oh. Trailer Park. That's, that's like trying to figure out the difference between Elvis and the Clash. You know, it's like <laughs> they're, they're period pieces. <laughs> I haven't seen Letter Kenny. Really, you haven't? Oh, uh, so Letter Kenny's amazing. Boys. Peter Patter. Yeah. Yeah, there they, it's there's no words. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Kids in the Hall, I think uh, hall, I just yeah. saw something pop up. Kids in the Hall. Yeah, that was classic Canadian comedy that started the whole thing, I think. So yeah, what's the word? And I'll drink that <laughs> again. <laughs> I gotta open up another you can go ahead. I'll skip that one. Uh but yeah, go ahead and check that out. Um we'll see what you like. Got a little bit of something for everyone. Um, with that being said, we'll go ahead and move on to number four, the last roundup horror club meeting. Number eight, uh, Wolf Cop, uh, 2014 film. It's a, a full fledged review of Wolf Cop, an installment of The Horror of Moss Grove, and some really fun trivia games were played on this episode of the last roundup horror club. Look for the upcoming review of Hell Comes to Frogtown dropping <laughs> soon. Wolf Cop was great, man. We we watch 
basically really good movies every time on the club because they're voted on in a poll in our group so the cream rises to the top so i mean not that this is cream i mean i love the transformations in this movie i mean it's really hard werewolves are very tricky it either goes really good or really bad and uh every one of them is fucking phenomenal in this this is one of the best movies for that type of shit could have did without the exploding dick that was a little crazy (laughs) um but honestly some of the greatest werewolf transformations in the genre i think um there's some other good effects too. The switchblade in the eye situation was really effective. Oh uh, yeah. Um, I don't know why they made that guy the leader of the gang. I know that he's really the, you know, police chief or whatever, but it seemed like there was some some sort of uh, power dynamic out of whack, you know, because this dude's kind of a douchebag. There was older guys there that, you know, seemed like they should have been running the show, <laughs> like <laughs> old enough to be this dude's dad. Um. I, my favorite character uh, is Willie, played by Jonathan Cherry. Uh, I thought he was a great comedic sidekick for a while, anyways, until he did his uh, heel turn there at the end. I see here that there was a sequel to this movie, too. Yeah, right? Another Wolf Cop. An- literally called Another Wolf Cop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. If you, like, you guys uh, didn't watch that yet? No, no. I, I, I just watched wolf cup came out years ago and i just now saw it when we did the review for it It, it's one of those ones i i wanted to watch for a while but it's hard to find the right mood to watch a wild ass canadian (laughs) werewolf movie like that the uh tag is sequels are a disease meet the cure (laughs) another wolf cop another wolf cop that's funny. Now, now that piqued my interest. <laughs> to watch that. But, uh, but before we go to uh, number three, maybe we, uh, Jay, maybe we should talk about uh, here. We should talk about uh, and notice a little bit, shall we? Yeah, we'll do another uh, shameless plug of notice. Uh, so we got. I know this year has been kind of uh, is thrown a lot of bands out of the loop with music venues closing down and not many live shows, if any. Um, so what we did, uh, with our time, we worked on a new album and try to encapsulate, or I guess, capture the vibes from this year and the vibes going into the, of making this record, um, making the most of it, capturing here. And uh, we're going with the one word, uh, cause the last album was one word as well as June. Um, and then this one we're gonna go with here. With yes, here. and it's it's interesting just just how we kind of done all this. It was, I I'd say majority like we we were able to get to our like we have our own studio, third floor studios. Another plug. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we were able to do most of the, uh, the drum tracks at uh, at the studio. And literally for everything else, um, we did that because that's right when the, uh, I, I guess, the curfew started. So, you know, just as a group, we decided uh, then December. increase. Yeah. And then increase right, yeah. the, the increase of the numbers. We are producer and we all agreed to like kind of do it individually. So we literally <laughs> we're recording and zoom meeting with uh, with our producer and recording each individual track one by one mm-hmm. so and from what we we've accomplished thus far it we we still have a little bit more to do but this is this is for you guys and it's going to be one hell of a of an ep so definitely uh definitely keep your ears out in february 2021 yeah, it's it's it was definitely a learning experience and still is. And um, yeah, it's 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 going to be a different vibe from the first one. Um, definitely, kind of in your face and kind of. I don't know. How would you describe it, Trent? It it goes to drinking, to being hey, we're we're humans too, to getting punched in the face by mortgage and bills and life to more beer drinking i don't know <laughs> i don't know 
but but yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's definitely different, and I uh, hope you like it. I, I'm looking forward to it. There's going to be a lot more uh, energy. Uh, and I I'm trying I to keep honestly, that momentum from the first one. So I I agree. I think honestly, this this EP is probably a few of the songs. Actually, all the songs are our best work so yeah. thus far and, and especially given hear. the situation that we have and well. then yeah and <laughs> then going back to recording each individual track separately yeah. separately so, <laughs> but yeah yeah uh, stay stay on the lookout for that we're excited for it so uh with that we'll go ahead and move on uh to number number three you got there trent yeah number three hillbilly uh, therapy Infected yeah, you want to take cousins. this trend? Yes, Infected Cousins, Christmas Perms, and Grandma's Bad Candy. I can relate to all those things. <laughs> Christmas Perms, huh? <laughs> <laughs> in this holiday, in this holiday themed dose of hillbilly, fill, ah, hillbilly therapy, Dan and Jake help some listeners with their seasonal woes. If you'd like the guys to give you any advice, just email the show at hillbillytherapy at gmail.com. Let's get to the first question, shall we? Okay, it starts off really nice. Hope you had a, both had a wonderful Thanksgiving. All right. I unfortunately had one of the worst turkey days that I can remember this year. Let me break it down for you. I like when they break it down for us. Yes. My family came from Illinois, even though I told them I wasn't comfortable with them doing a get-together this year due to the globe pandemic. Well, as soon as they arrived, my Aunt Shelly started showing symptoms of the virus and upon getting checked to the hospital was revealed to have, surprise, surprise, COVID-19, which oh, meant these seven weirdos would be stuck at my house for not only a weekend as originally planned, but for two whole weeks on lockdown because we were all exposed and these assholes, their word, not mine, had no place else to go. I ended up having a breakdown at one point canceling all future family reunions forever and calling my cousin Dylan a gay slur. He's not gay, and I don't even use that ugly language. Wow. Is there any way to redeem myself following this stress meltdown? Brought to you by Shamed by Regret in Lebanon, Ohio. That was a roller coaster. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd say... Uh... Other than the uh, probably calling your cousin to apologize for calling a, a gay slur, yeah, um, that, that's something else. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a different one. I would call that cousin to apologize uh, a um, little bit. Yeah, the rest of them kind of fuck them. Yeah, they they, they <laughs> yeah. I don't. Told, if you told them no and they still fucking show up, they're kind, yeah. they're kind of assholes. Yeah, the good news is the good news is after this, after you have a giant meltdown and have a some kind of homophobic not you. <laughs> well yeah they have some kind of homophobic <laughs> slant against a man who is actually isn't gay uh they you might not have any more in the future so you might have just cut yourself <laughs> off now that might have solved your own problem like two years from now we're not even gonna have a problem you're still not gonna go because they're gonna disown you so you there's may have won the, you may have played the long game i don't know that's weird I'll I'm also curious what the context of the gay slur was. Like, I want to, yeah, I want to know the argument where someone just randomly throw. Like, I could even say, like, throw. Like, I'm not saying you should throw it out, but I cannot imagine a scenario in which you would throw it out to someone that you know isn't. I'll drink to that. <laughs> nice. What you got a Merlot there? What is that? Uh, actually, Some sort of red. It is a red blend. It is a 2016 <laughs> California. Charles Shaw. Oh. This nice. is not really expensive at all. It's also called Two Buck Chuck. Well, expensive but, expensive wine is kind of like, I don't know. I, I don't have the, the taste for it. You know, like I don't have the palate, I guess. So I, I cheap will wine, say this. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Go I was ahead, just going to say cheap wine is the same as expensive wine to my tongue. Uh, it, you're right. You're right. With wine, like... I don't know. There's a few wine that I always cling to. Uh, Charles Shaw is one of them. And I don't know. At, at first, I wasn't really much of a wine drinker. But one of my buddies from Lima, um, a professor uh, from Ohio Northern University, who will also be a guest hopefully in this future with our podcast, um, talked about two penises with sharks. 
Plus, is that where that came from? It, it is actually. <laughs> it's, it's the one thing you took from. Him. <laughs> That's the only thing that I learned, and I didn't even go to ONU. But, <laughs> but nice. no, he's a good guy. But he he actually introduced me to a lot of wine, and then it just kind of built up a taste. And with his selections, I shared that same knowledge over to you, Jay. And I mean, you drink a lot of wine with me. I have, yeah. Uh, the one thing that actually does stick out to me was that one. Uh, what was it? It was the Rolling Stones wine. Oh yes, that and one that was, was an really experience because we listened to we did uh, a Stones I, record. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I think it was your dad's that. like it original. Was my dad's original, yeah, pressing, and that was seven, that just added to the experience. It was, it was a good, awesome. that was that was a Merlot. That was a good night. It was a good night. Yeah. We should. What What are you doing next week, Jay? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's 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 schedule something there. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we'll go ahead and move on. Trent, if you want to take number two, too, as well. Numero dos. <laughs> Murder Fluent. Oh, episode yeah. four. Say this name. Israel Keys. Nice. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm, I'm smart. <laughs> I'll drink to I, that. I'm I'm actually I'm actually a fan of this uh of this uh, podcast that you and your wife do, Frank. Thanks, man. Um yeah, uh, she loves all the all those uh, true crime things, and I don't know much about them because they really bum me out. Um, so if you want to hear me get bummed out, so he did admit to killing one other couple, um, Bill and Lorraine Courier of Essex, Essex, Vermont, and we do have a couple pictures of Bill and Lorraine. Um, he flew to Chicago, rented a car, and drove a thousand miles to Vermont and murdered them. At random. Oh man, Bill! Look at Bill. He's just having a good time. They just look like regular people, you know. Yeah, like you'd have a conversation with this couple about like the most pedestrian stuff. It'd be like right. she'd talk to you about how her mom used to make the best right. iced tea, and he'd just yeah. be talking about the new chamois he got for his hot rod, you know. <laughs> Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah, it's sad. I don't know. And it's I sad. will protect you. Random if somebody people. comes in the house, I will kill them. I just with I their don't know. Own he broke in weapon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like there's always something fucked up, some twist like about kids or something. And I'm like, oh God. Have you guys uh are you guys planning on doing like Anthony Casey or uh, I'm not sure what uh, she was talking. She asked me, maybe you can give me some insight on this. Um, okay. Who were you wanting to do next? Oh, she was t- thinking uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. She's like, oh, maybe that's, oh, she's, she's oh. like, maybe that's too mainstream. And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know much about him really. Uh, I mean, but he, he's the guy who Jeffrey Dahmer, he's the dude that was like in, he's the bomber, right? No, he was the gay, he the, guy? Uh, the gay cannibal, I believe. Yeah. Oh, he's he's the Ohio one. He went to Ohio State, right? I don't know, man. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, oh I know my that... God, it is. So I got a funny story about Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> is that right? I bet a lot of people don't have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, fun, I actually have a story. story. <laughs> fun story about Jeffrey Dahmer. He he went to Ohio State like he he was enrolled there in like either early 90 or whenever whenever right before he went on his like cannibalism spree or killing yeah. parents spree or whatever. Like he was a student at Ohio State and he went to the bar and and Jay, you're you're going to know this bar, too. He went to Bernie's. He no. skipped, <laughs> yes. Yes. <sighs> he skipped. He skipped classes to go drinking at Bernie's. Still too he, soon. Yeah, that's yeah. not where he. I mean, if you're if you're a you know, a, a, well, no, a, ga- no, a gay this, dude on the town in Columbus, are you going to Bernie's? Don't you go down actually, to like? Uh, actually, this is this is what I'm saying. He, or maybe maybe I'm confusing him. I don't know, but I believe it's Jeffrey Dahmer. I, no, no, it's it. Dahmer. I, I I looked it up right now. Yeah, he did go to Ohio State. So so Jeffrey Dahmer, he he frequent Bernie's quite a bit. They had what is called the the passport. And I know this because I have like three passports from Bernie's already because, you know, I have no life. (laughs) But it's essentially you drink 200 beers from around the world and you get like this pewter mug and then you get a stamp on the wall that they that they had there. Jeffrey Dahmer is on that wall. Wow. Now, is Bernie still open? It's not, unfortunately. 
Yeah, I thought I, I thought I read that somewhere. Drink. Sad. I'll drink to that toast. <laughs> but yeah, great place. Um, we'll go ahead and move on. I guess that brings us to number one. And I feel that, like with I'll, this, I I'll have to. We'll, we'll, we'll take a drink to that. And like, I feel like I have to, you know, introduce this in like a WWE, WWE fashion or whatever, as best as I can. Like, <laughs> number one, Exploder Wrestling Podcast, episode 79, Powerhouse. <laughs> in this intriguing episode of the Exploder Wrestling Podcast, Dan takes a look at the legendary, brutal uh, WCW power plant training facility, the center that chewed up and spat out so many professional re- wrestling hopefuls before their careers could even begin. So I messed that up. I, I said WWE, and this is WCW. Yeah. You get it. <laughs> yeah, they used to um... – <laughs> I watched wrestling heavily when they were promoting this thing. Like, and I, I always thought it looked cool. I'm like, I want to go do that. Like that's, that sounds so, so awesome. Yeah. And then like doing it, when I put this uh, video together, this episode together for Dan, like he sent me all these links for like, you know, uh, the, the videos of people going through it. And it looks like they were just beating the fuck out of people wearing them out until they vomit. There's this dude from a, uh, bbc that went and like had said something to the dude about um wrestling being fake and uh all this shit and so they ran him hard until he threw up then they made him sit in a corner until he decided he was ready to do more exercise um it was just really like i think diamond dallas page came out of there and a couple others but more more often than not people would just go in with a lot of hope and then get like worked until they were about to die and then they just give up you know like <laughs> it was just a way to make a bunch of money i suppose power plant did not have tuition uh, i know many famous schools were you know fifteen hundred dollars to get through and th- things like that he didn't but also it was understood that people that were trained there were trained a because they passed a tryout and i'll get to that and b already had some kind of basic fundamentals. Now this would change later as you would eventually end up with uh, guys who had no wrestling background, guys like Bill Goldberg famously, who passed the tryout and then eventually got trained and became, in his case, one of the biggest in the wrestling business. But these were very rare. The school itself is not considered a great wrestling school. Um, It's not a knock on anybody. Jody Hamilton, Kevin Nash, famous remarked that Jody Hamilton's age, because even by this point, Jody Hamilton was a manager in WCW. He was an older guy and it limited the kind of stuff he could do. Now, it would produce guys like Diamond Dallas Page, who started wrestling at 35 years old. I'm 36 and I can imagine starting wrestling at 36. I, I, I don't know. It can be done, obviously. Kevin Nash, Marcus Bagwell, Van Hammer, and things like that. But it wasn't necessarily known for being a great school that produced high quality talent. I mean, I could list the guys I, the people I mentioned earlier. We're talking about, you know, the Hart Family Dungeon, the Monster Factory, or even Vern Gagne's camp. I could name, you know, 15, 20 people who became big stars. WCW's power plant was not necessarily known for that. It was known for a couple guys. Like I said, Dime Dust Page, Kevin Nash, Goldberg. You know, I mean, there's very few actually main top guys. Now, there'd be a lot of guys who came out of the school, and I'll get to that, but not necessarily guys who were big stars, let's put it that way. Not that people who would be in the business 15, 20 years later. Certainly not many world champions, with the exception of the three I mentioned, with being Nash, Page, and Goldberg. Uh, but not really known for being a great school, just being a school that was attached to to WCW, and that's why you wanted to go there because you wanted to be seen by people so that maybe you could debut on Monday Nitro. It seemed more, this training facility seemed more along the lines of what they used to do back in like the carnival days where they would have like, a, you know, like a big wrestling dude challenging people in the audience, and then they'd just wear them out, hurt them, and then they'd go thinking, you know, they'd go around telling people, yeah, wrestling's real, man. Like, they beat the shit out of me, and then that was the whole deal. I, it just seemed like this training camp was more of that, you know? Remember remember, there was, like, reality TV show in, like, the early 2000s of being the next WWE, like, superstar? You guys oh, remember yeah. that? That was um, tough enough tough enough yes you can, you can if you oh, go wow. do yourself forgot about that do yourself a favor and get the get a free subscription to the wwe network you can get like a month for free that whole series is on there and it's one of the best things they ever did it's like 
fucking crazy interesting to watch these people go through these things and then come up with characters and then i don't know it's just like and you can watch all the old shit on there too they have all the because since they have all the rights to the wcw stuff and ecw like you can go back and watch shit so old that you <laughs> you're like what the hell am i watching but, are you serious like oh, old, yeah. like freaking like his before name? goldberg can, going and oh outrun. way older than that like oh, the wow. first thing that they ever did was this big tournament it was like you know and we're talking guys you wouldn't even know you know the moon dogs and stuff like that <laughs> and that was vince mcmahon in like an announcer role like he was just really like, yeah it, 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 it's it's fucking crazy but they also have a show on wwe network called uh uh legend house or something like that where they just throw in a bunch of these like 80s uh wrestlers and make them live in a house together and mm-hmm. it, it, that's fucking hilarious too because the, these dudes are all old and pissed off and hurt you know and put them all together make them live together <laughs> i'd watch that i don't yeah. you know because i remember you know i i've watched some wrestling too and you we, have people that are like <laughs> yeah yeah we all have but then you have people that really would hate on it and be like you know yeah the people that say you know yeah it's fake and whatnot but there's there's more to that that yeah. that goes into it you know there's this this character development and whatnot and then mm-hmm. they really train I, um, hard for this but i actually put it on this show i actually went to school i actually went to school with one of the children of a <clears throat> wwf or wwe superstar al snow yeah yeah i i think she was a grade below me i believe but but yeah he he was a good guy too. I mean, I've physically never met him, but I guess they were doing like some like parent day come to school lunch, and then everybody oh, was like yeah. all hyped because there's Al Snow oh, and yeah. all that. He was crazy probably stuff. really big at that time too. Oh yeah. Oh, but yeah, what I always I, I still enjoy it for what it is. And when people are like, "Well, why would you watch that? It's fake. Everything's fucking fake." Yeah. At least these guys are doing it in front of a crowd, right in front of you. Like it's and, it's entertainment, yeah. and I think I think the Undertaker says it best. Um, on quoting him from Hot Ones when he uh, was interviewed by Paul I saw Collins, that episode. He he said like, you know, I did it for you just to get get you out of like your rigmarole or your day by day type of ordeal. Just get you out of life Mm -hmm. and just enjoy something like me beating the crap out of somebody. Yeah. And if you watch, um, uh, Ron Funches, he has a great comedy bit about pro wrestling. He says, uh, something along the lines of, you think that I believe that the undertaker has magic powers and can throw lightning. And do you, do you think that I legitimately want to see somebody hit somebody with a chair, uh, and beat them senseless over a belt? No, <laughs> it's entertainment. <laughs> yeah. And and with that, I'll drink. <laughs> and also, don't forget Paul Bear. Yeah, never forget Paul Bear. He uh, passed away. Paul you Bear. Can fi- yep. You can find some really funny stuff with Paul Bear online if you oh, if you yeah. hit the YouTube up. All right, everyone, that's pretty much it. Then um, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap this up. I don't have anything else. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, well, what we presented for you and enjoy the top 10, a lot of great content. You got to check them out. Seriously, check out the, I'm sure we're going to include the links in the bio and whatnot. Um, But yeah, hope you all have a safe New Year's Eve. And uh, don't don't get too drunk. I'll drink to that. And let's, let's not, (laughs) let's not jinx it. Everyone stay quiet and let's just get, let's walk quietly into the room. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everyone. All right. Take care.